among the recipients for this year's President's Award for Teachers, an educator who got her students to use 3D pens to create their ideal school building. Another teacher's history by conducting oral interviews. Oh, there's also a lecturer who helps guide students in developing a self-sterilizing agent for surface coating. Oh, that has attracted industry grants of $120,000. Eight teachers picked up this year's award, including four from secondary schools and two each from primary schools and polytechnics. Over 4,300 were nominated. The award was established in 1998. And the recipients will be able to participate in an overseas learning program to further their professional development. They were chosen from 17 finalists. All 17 will receive a grant to attend either overseas or local conferences, seminars or courses. And we have two of this year's President's Award winners right here with us in the studio. Ms. Yang Yanchi is Head of Department at CHIJ Katong Primary School. And Ms. Malani Teyagesan is Senior Lecturer in the School of Applied Science at Republic Polytechnic. Good evening and welcome to both of you and thank Good you for evening. joining us. Good evening. Yanchi, uh, let's begin with you. You teach digital literacy, as I understand it. Some would say that is a, a tough topic. It's, it's, it's a dry topic to some as well. How do you make it enjoyable? So I think uh, most importantly is making it relevant for our students. So we try to create uh, an authentic learning experience for them by incorporating digital tools and platforms in our daily lessons. So some examples of what we do is maybe perhaps teaching students how to use a spreadsheet to present their data um, during a mathematics lesson. Uh, or it could be um, doing online research and evaluate online resources um, during a science lesson. So they and we are encouraging them to actually uh, create a lot of videos and presentations so that they can build um, effective communication skills as well as dig um, digital storytelling and uh, also content creation. Yeah, so um, right. these are some of the things that we actually so do. So practical use. Yes. Mm. And beyond just practical theory as well, you're behind this initiative, Girls Like Tech, which is a program which you can outline that for us now. And uh, what is the take-up rate for that? Is it popular amongst the girls who are, you assume here, liking tech? Oh, I guess it's a cross board. So uh, this is a whole school program, actually. So other than what I've mentioned earlier, um, we also try to expose our students to the latest digital trends and platforms and tools and emerging technology, such as um, virtual reality. 3D printing, um, coding, robotics, and even artificial intelligence. So we hope through this program, we can help our students appreciate the benefits, the risks, and the possibilities that technology can bring. So ultimately, we want them to understand that technology can be used for good because it's a, such a powerful tool. It certainly so. is. Malini, uh, let's bring you on the conversation here. You've been very busy. You, <laughs> you teach applied science. You also created a student development roadmap a framework for, for students as well. Tell us what that means for your students, how they use it. So generally this uh, student development framework is actually meant to allow students to take ownership and be reflective on their development of uh, being holistic. Because you know, we talk about holistic development, but it's important for students to recognize where are their gaps in holistic development. And there is an app that students can actually log in what they have actually uh, participated in. So this could be, for example, in terms of service learning, community work, or it could be a skill-based competency work, or something to find out about careers like ECG. And this also allows for lecturers to actually be able to mentor students because we are able to see where the gap is and we can then tell them like you know hey you haven't been participating in community service for example and these experiences are very important because i think it's experiences that allow students to enjoy learn things outside the classroom and it also helps them in their mental wellness because they get to see different people different experiences and these experiences become what they learn at the end of the day yeah. All right. Uh, wellness, I mean, we are throwing that word around so much in every context now. So uh, I think in order to do this effectively in a school, say in an, in, in an educator's context, you have to be very clear 
what you hope to achieve for wellness in your students because some things are out of your control. So how would you define it? How would you uh, use your teaching in the classroom to ensure wellness as you define it for your students? For us, um, when we talk about, I mean, studies have shown that um, mental wellness issue is on the rise, um, whether it's during the pandemic or even the post-pandemic. And youngsters who tend to be very highly influenced, we want to make sure that they have the right resources and help if needed be. So for us, we have things like peer supporters. We get students to interact with other junior students. So the older, older students, the peer supporters act like big sister, big brother, because I mean, I'm definitely more comfortable speaking to somebody of my age than somebody who is much older, right? And like what we mentioned, it's very important for teachers to know what exactly are we talking about when we talk about mental wellness. So we have communities of learning among staff to be better trained. We also have mentoring framework in Republic Polytechnic. The mentors work together with the student for three years. So there is a relationship, a bond, a rapport built that then helps to identify if there are students with mental wellness issues. Sometimes it's not just about a clinically diagnosed mental wellness. Sometimes it's just making students be thankful and happy about what they have around them. Because when they are a happy person, they're able to learn well as well. Mm. Well, growing up, my older sister tutored me all the time in maths and, and, and in science subjects as well. I didn't like it very much, but I benefited hugely from that support. Yanchi, motivating students to learn, to enjoy learning as well, uh, that, you know, it also depends on their age group. I mean, it, it's tough. You want to be able to motivate the younger ones, preteens especially. How do you do that effectively? So I think there's no secret to that. It's all about, you know, building a very positive classroom culture and that rep rapport with our students. So I think it's very important to understand each and every one of our students very well in terms of their needs, um, their personality, as well as their interests. And from there, you know, we will be able to adapt our teaching strategies accordingly that fits them best. Yeah. All right, Yanchi, uh, you are head of department at CHIJ Katong Primary School and uh, Malini is a senior lecturer at Republic Polytechnic. So, uh, very simplistically, I take it you're teaching young people at very different stages yes, in yes, their yes. lives. So, what she mentioned about how you motivate people, how you draw your students in, uh, how would that apply across the board for older students or would you need to fine-tune that? for your cohort to shoot. Well, definitely, because I think with older students, it's also important, especially in the polytechnic setting, that students understand what the industry needs, what are they training themselves for. And um, it's no longer the chalk and board method anymore. You know, when students come from the younger generation, primary, secondary, where there's so much of ad tech tools and technology, they come here expecting that too. So we have ad tech tools, like for example, virtual reality, something we've implemented in the classroom in one of our biomedical science modules where the students are able to interact with um, blood sample, urine samples that are actual samples that are handled in the laboratory. And that gives them actually a very safe space to even make mistakes and learn because students learn through their mistakes. We have 360 video to teach about the workflow of the laboratory or even a digitalized e-library to learn about microscopic images. So attack tools are something that is very important to keep them engaged and to be able to get them to relate to what exactly industry expects and what is the work that they are in for. Malini Yanchi, thank you so much for coming into the studio and talking to us uh, about uh, these uh, very important issues with education. And congratulations once again as well on your President's Award. We've been speaking there to Ms. Yang Yanchi, HOD at CHIJ Katong Primary School, as well as Ms. Malini Thayagesan, Senior Lecturer, Republic Polytechnic.